All right, here's section five, and that's the focus question. Despite the apparent disintegration of slavery and eroding Southern morale, the war's outcome was uncertain in 1863 and 1864. In April 1863, Fighting Joe Hooker, a new Union commander in the East, invaded Central Virginia. Outnumbered two to one, Lee repelled Hooker at Chancellorsville, though his most talented commander, Stonewall Jackson, was mortally wounded in the fight. Lee soon decided on another invasion of the North, although the rationale for it remains unknown. His army met and fought Union forces under General George G. Meade at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, the first three days of July. Gettysburg was the largest battle ever in North America. 165,000 troops fought there. A desperate frontal assault led by Major General George Pickett failed to break Union lines on July 3rd, and Lee, having regretted ordering Pickett's charge, retreated. The high tide of the Confederacy had been reached, and Lee's soldiers never again set foot on northern soil. Simultaneously, Union forces led by Ulysses S. Grant had laid siege to Vicksburg, Mississippi, the last conf Confederate stronghold on the Mississippi River. On July 4th, Confederate forces surrendered and the entire Mississippi River fell to Union forces. Gettysburg and Vicksburg greatly diminished Southern hopes for victory. Given the command of Union forces in the East, Grant in 1864 initiated a war of attrition against Lee's army in Virginia. Grant was willing to incur high numbers of casualties with the knowledge that the North could replenish its armies while the South could not. In May 1864, Grant's Army of the Potomac began a month of fierce fighting and campaigning. In the Battle of the Wilderness, both sides suffered great casualties, but instead of retreating, as had previous Union commanders, Grant pushed on, fighting Lee again at Spotsylvania and Cold Harbor. After six weeks, Grant lost 60,000 men, an enormous number, but he inflicted 30,000 casualties on Lee's army. The sustained fighting was a turning point in modern warfare and more resembled the modern trench warfare of World War I than the methods of 1861. Although Grant maintained the initiative, his strategy led to criticisms that he was a butcher. Victory was elusive. When Grant failed to capture Petersburg, a city that controlled the railways into Richmond, he laid siege to the city. At the same time, General William T. Sherman marched through Georgia and took Atlanta in September of 1864. With casualties skyrocketing in the spring and summer of 1864, Northern morale sank to its lowest point in the war. Lincoln believed he would lose the presidential election in the fall. Radical Republicans nominated an alternative candidate, John C. Fremont, on a radical plank, and General George B. McClellan, the Democratic candidate, called for a peace conference with the Confederacy. Ultimately, Lincoln secured the Republican nomination and with Sherman's capture of Atlanta won a sweeping victory. Lincoln's re-election guaranteed that the war would continue until the Confederacy had been crushed. So that was our fifth section. We'll come back for the last one next.